Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ivan and I, uh, myself, uh, Deepak from Austin Computer Book, Book Club. Today, we're going to do a quick review of uh, Google Asari book. We picked this, uh, picked this book up uh, for our previous reading at our uh, club. And today, we'd like to share a few thoughts on our uh, reading about this. From me, the biggest takeaway from reading this book was from chapter six, which talks about monitoring. And this is a good uh, chapter for anyone who is looking for uh, an overview of monitoring. It talks about high level concepts uh, such as black box monitoring and white box monitoring, and specifically it outlines scenarios in which um, such monitoring could be useful. For example, alerting and also to build dashboards. And the biggest takeaway for me uh, you know, from this chapter was about the four golden signals um, that uh, Google proposes that we use for monitoring any online system. Um, the, those signals being latency, traffic, errors, and saturation. So that, that, is, that, that was my biggest takeaway. So I'll pass it on to Evan to talk about his biggest takeaways from the book. Cool. Yeah, I mean, from, from my perspective, like uh, I would have to say like the overall takeaway was, you know, I think the book acts as a history book, you know, more than anything. I think it's a history book in itself now at this point. I mean, it's a couple years old, but, you know, it's a good book to look at as far as like the origins of SRE and, you know, what SRE is now and, and how you can kind of apply it. So the takeaway, uh, definitely like a, a good reference book to, to learn about the history, but then from practicality, uh, what I actually ended up applying at my current organization was uh, various things like the on-call rotation section. So I thought that was a big, a big impactful item, uh, just areas on, you know, defining alerting uh, to, you know, noisy alerts and, and Elite, uh, alert fatigue and these kinds of things. So uh, I think that's that's a big part of what I took away from the book. Definitely, I mean the golden signals piece as well. I mean that's that's a big one. Just you know what are we what are we monitoring on and just in general what are we you know what, what are these signals that we need uh, to better you know really observe our systems. Uh, and this is this is something that I've been applying in my organization as well. But I think I think primarily the main takeaway was uh, yeah just just that that kind of that process, you know, the process of what Google did and then taking it and sizing it down to uh, the small to medium sized organization that I'm at now uh, was, was the big one. There was a lot of really interesting history, uh, some of which I ended up, you know, kind of skipping over as well, just because, you know, there wasn't really, it's not something I'm actively working on. You know, I'm not working on these, these, these massive, massively Google sized problems, <laughs> although very interesting. Uh, you know, I wanted to take what I could from the book and then apply it. Um, and then on, on that note, it's, it's like, there is another book, there's several other books, but like uh, the SRA handbook is a good example. It's probably one we'll have to read at some point too, <laughs> where it kind of talks about, you know, more like the practicality of things versus like this, the massive <laughs> stack of a book that SRA book is, but yeah. So that's, that's my, my takeaway from, from the book. Yeah, that's great. There's something that piggybacks on the monitoring stuff that I mentioned earlier is the, um, on chapter 10, I think, it talks about alerting and um, time series data in particular. And um, there is also this uh, utility called Boardmon that Google had built and how it has inspired mon modern uh, tools like Prometheus. So a lot of the themes that we see in uh, modern day monitoring tools um, get um, inspiration from some of these um, ideas that have uh, been put out in this book. Um, so that was really cool to learn. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, I agree with you. And just to think yeah. back on that as well, just like the fact that uh, Borg, uh, you know, the predecessor of Kubernetes. So it's very interesting. I see. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So it's just interesting to see like, you know, the, their, their business issues internally, and kind of the reasoning as to why they would build something kind of some you know like like Kubernetes, uh, so fascinating stuff. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So, yeah, I I, I do agree with you that uh, maybe it's not like an end to end read for everybody, but um, like um, on a case by cases uh, case basis, we can all pick um, what to read 
which chapters to concentrate on and so on. For example, part four uh, is mostly about management. So if you're in a purely technical role, maybe you can skip it. And likewise, for example, chap chapter 23 talks about distributed consensus, which is a notorious topic, but a fascinating topic at the same time. So if you're uh, into building those kind of systems, like distributed systems at a lower level, those kind of chapters could be useful, but otherwise you could um, skip those as well. Yeah, so let's do overall thought of the book, good or bad. I think that would be pretty interesting. There are bad. I think some some of the chapters go go into a, a whole lot of detail that may not really apply to everybody. So yeah. in that sense, it could be a little drag on um, on time. But again, it depends really on uh, your role in your company and you know what you're um, doing. So yeah, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and that's exactly what I had to do as well, was just kind of, you know, go through each chapter, uh, really look at the chapter title, and then kind of understand, you know, can I apply this to, to where I'm, you know, to where I'm working. It's one thing to kind of like understand the history, but it's another, I think the good side of the book was, you know, the applicable items, at least in my perspective. The bad side was, of course, just like the very intensive depth of, of you know, how they got to this point, which was, I mean, it's fascinating without a doubt, but when you're trying to apply these things, and I know I know a lot of organizations are trying to do these things as well, as far as like SLOs and SLIs and error budgets and whatnot, um, there, are, uh, there are some more, probably some quicker reads out there. Um, one of which I can suggest is practical monitoring, at least on the alerting side. I think this is a fantastic read for anyone looking to get into um, uh, kind of a more defined uh, approach to how they're doing observability. Um, and then particular on the alerting side is an interesting read. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my take. And then of course the SRE handbook, which I'm you know, interested in reading next, that should be a good one. Uh, and then uh, there's another book that's out, which kind of released all this, of course, is, and it's the, uh, it's literally like the SLO book. <laughs> so it's how to apply uh, service level objectives. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the, the good of the book is like the practicality, like what can I apply? And then the bad is just like a lot of you know, very uh, uh, in-depth history, which is very interesting to read. But again, once again, it's like, how can I apply it to to where I'm working now is, is kind of what I focused on. And that was, that was my focus point throughout the book. Uh, here it is. Yeah. So Google SRE book review, Dan Liu. Uh, yeah. There is quite a bit of, of information here. So they go into much, much, much more depth than you know any, any video review could do, but this is a fascinating read. So for anyone who wants to you know, read the SRE book, I would, uh, we would rather advise checking out uh, danlu.com slash google dash SRE dash book. And I'll, we'll leave a, a, this link in the notes or the description of this video uh, because there's a lot of content co to consume here uh, that's condensed. So it's like this condensed, you know, uh, pill of the book that you can consume and pretty much get a, a good understanding if you read it a few times over. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty neat. Definitely. It's a good summary. Yeah. <laughs> he seems to have skipped a few chapters, but uh, maybe yeah, that's very true. Now, but, but that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you go down that route and I agree with you, yeah. And that if you do, if you do end up, you know, checking out this, uh, this, this blog review, uh, chapter 32 is one to actually read uh, mm. in the book. And that's, that's one to really kind of, you know, really understand the future of SRE and how to apply it and all that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's a good one. And then I guess the other thing I wanted to mention as well for anyone watching this video, uh, if they want like a course on SRE, like and just really the principles that that what you know some of this book covers, or I would say all of this book covers, uh, is to check out uh, check out um, there is a course online if I can find it. Yeah, SRE course. Coursera, here it is. So go to Coursera, Coursera.org, uh, and it looks like site reliability engineering, measuring and managing reliable, uh, reliability. So it's quite literally offered by Google. So for those of which who are not, uh, you know, big book readers and whatnot, definitely check this out at Coursera, uh, because I've gotten, I think I've gotten like 70 or 80% into this. I just need to finish it, uh, but it kind of, it touches on all of the things, you know, discussed within the book. Nice. Is, 
Is that a hands-on course? Like, do you have labs and all, or what is it? it I would say it is hands-on. It's hands-on in the sense that they give you, so there's a couple of videos, you watch a couple of the videos, and then at the end of that particular section, they'll, they'll present to you um, some options, some, some quizzes. So you got, you know, your handful of quizzes in there, but then the hands-on portion is, you know, they might give you a graph in that graph. They'll, they'll kind of identify like, you know, what is a good, or sorry, like a number of metrics. And then they'll say like, what is a good SLI from, you know, this handful of metrics that you can actually apply. And then, you know, the next section will go into like SLOs, for example. Mm -hmm. And then from SLOs, it'll say, uh, you know, what is, what is a good SLO? And then that kind of deal. So it's hands-on in the sense that there's quizzes and then there's peer reviews during that course as well. Peer reviews, meaning um, other people taking the course on Coursera. It's not like, you know, it's like college class or anything like that. But uh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting enough to, for anyone that doesn't, that might not necessarily have the time to read the essay book, but um, something worth checking out, in my opinion, you know, if you can't, if you don't want to read the book, if you don't want to read through that blog post that we're going to, that we shared, then check out uh, that Coursera course, um, because it, it's, it's, uh, as far as like getting it done, it's, it's doable. You know, it's like, uh, it's like less time than some a cloudguru.com courses. So <laughs> It's worth checking out for anyone who's interested in, in getting the the uh, practicality from uh you know all of these things so now that sounds interesting it should be uh, very useful for our readers yeah absolutely do you want to talk about error budgets like how do you actually use that and um, sure. i mean there is there is this um, inherent trade-off right the, the book kind of outlines the tension between um innovation and um uh, reliability because the product is continuously trying yep. to push through features versus like Asari wants to keep it frozen all the time, right? Yep. And how do you manage that um, trade-off? Yeah, I, I agree with you. And then just just on the topic of, of error budgets, um, I mean, that's one of the most difficult things, at least for what I'm trying to do at, the, at an organization right now, because, uh, you know, as you, the mention in the book is, there's a trade-off, you know, if you want to start applying, I mean, first you gotta, you know, there's the idea of you selecting, selecting a service, you know, what service, you know, provided that you're doing distributed systems and microservices and whatnot. If you're, you know, if you, if you want to choose one service, then this is something that I'm trying to do right now. Uh, you have an SLI, you have an SLO, uh, great. You might not need an SLA. It might not be this public facing service, uh, but then comes the error budget, you know? So, you, the, uh, the concept of the error budget is to essentially set a limit. So, you know, each quarter, each, you know, each whatever, you know, a year, whatever it might be, uh, that you don't go out of bounds of that error budget. I think it's an interesting concept because there is this issue that I've had over the years where you're, you're dealing with a lot of alerts, you're dealing with pages, you're dealing with a lot of, a, a lot of errors from, uh, what's usually a baseline. So normally, you know, I, what I've seen at least over the past couple of years and what, what I've done is, you know, you have a baseline of a particular stat of a metric, some, something that's being monitored. And then if something deviates from that baseline, it's going to send out some form of an alert. And you could define that in various ways. Like the ways that I defined it where you have an informational alert, uh, and then you have like an actionable alert. So you have like an incident. This is what I got from the SRE book as well, you know, and you're kind of reading around. So that, that it's worked, you know, but you get to the point where you want to really kind of mature out the process and you can kind of start alerting on like SLOs and error budgets. Uh, the issue, of course, and as you mentioned, like that balance, the balance of the error budget is a difficult one because even applying an error budget, you know, you have to, there's this communication process of you have to work with all of these different teams. You can't, like as an SRE, you just can't be like, okay, we're now, you know, you can't surprise everyone and show up in a meeting. Hey, we have an S we have, here's an SLO now for the service. You know, you have to ensure, you know, this, this particular service is SRE support. Uh, good. Everyone's aware, everyone's aware of this thing. And then you kind of move on to this error budget piece. And, you know, from there it becomes difficult because there's that balance of, you know, do you want, like, given the fact that, you know, this, this error budget is in place, you might've released frequently, you might release infrequently, whatever it might be. The problem comes from like when errors actually start occurring. And if you go out of that uh, error budget, because then, you know, you can basically utilize that error budget as a tool set to say that, you know, this particular service is, we've been having so many errors with a service that we can't, yes, or you can't support it because we're getting paged in the middle of the night. It's, it's kind of a mess. So there's a cultural aspect of, 
of uh, you know working with all these teams, getting buy-in, and I would I would say getting executive buy-in. That's that's a big deal because you want to ensure like especially in the executive side, depending on how how well that company's doing, and if they really want to play around with the idea of doing things like error budgets and whatnot. Because um, I've been in situations where you're in companies and you're deploying you know, to save the company, essentially, <laughs> you're doing deployments to, for the, for the life of the company in some sense. Um, and I, I, you know, saying, being the stopping sign, being the blocker and saying like, Hey, we can't do this deployment because everybody's just completely gone. Ooh, all the problems start. <laughs> so there's Ooh. the issues there, you know, and I, I, they touched on that a bit and they talked about, you know, the, this, this buy-in and whatnot, but I think really like you have to, if, for anyone who's been working in those types of companies, those, that level of startup, uh, it's, it's a, it's a hard sell sometimes. And it's one of those things where it, it requires quite a bit of buy-in, um, to the point where, you know, it's, it's, it could be, you know, it could turn into an awkward conversation, essentially <laughs> it's, it's quite, it can be quite, quite, uh, unnerving, um, for some mm-hmm. teams and all that. So, yeah, so that, that's the air budget piece. I think it's a, I think it's a great concept because, uh, and with SLOs as well, I, I, I love the idea because it's like, you know, like it's like a whole team buy-in. You get this this entire team to buy into things versus before when I was working in, like in the past when I was working with testing, you you had to, you wanted to work with the teams, <laughs> but the teams oftentimes didn't, might not necessarily wanted to work with you on things because you would find an issue and it became problematic. And it was like each sprint they kind of expected, you know, if you, they throw the product over the wall and then you, you test it, and then it became a problem. And the same thing with ops over the years, you know, you threw the, through the, you know, whatever the deployment over the wall, and then you did you, the ops had to work to deploy it. And it, it was problematic. So I like SLOs and error budgets and I like SRE because it's this, this team approach. It, it can be, if you, you know, if you're doing it, uh, you know, with this buy-in, it can be a team approach to things. Uh, and it's, it's, it can be quite nice, but it's also, I love it because it's a safety guardrail in the sense that, you know, if you're, if someone, if a team is deploying errors, errors, errors each time, you can, you can be the stopping force just so you get that. If you get that buy-in, you can be that stopping force that says, you know, we can't keep deploying because this <laughs> the service is completely, it's complete, <laughs> complete garbage, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if you're starting uh, from scratch with the new service, is it fair to say that you're going to first um, start top down, meaning like you first come up with a SLO for your service, like what is acceptable for your customers. And then from there, um, internally negotiate, keeping the customers a customer's perspective in mind, like internally internally negotiate their budget for that. Is that how it works? I, I think so. I think so. This is that portion I haven't done. We haven't done a new SLO on an, on a on new new product, for example. But based on what I've read and and kind of you know read about and kind of seen on the videos and whatnot. Uh, I, I do believe the SLO can change. So there's this, you know, you, you can change the SLO. It's not like this final, you, you can set that. And especially for like a newer project, right? Like it's, it's newer projects are, are riskier, should be. <laughs> they should be riskier unless you're doing like this massive, mass, and I've done, I'm doing it right now, this massive legacy project where you're dealing with a whole other slew of issues that you're, you're trying to make nice and do a new service and whatnot but yeah yeah for the new services it should be a moving slo target i i would say like it, it would say like okay we want to start with this this and this in slo because initially you'd have to kind of estimate that you'd have to estimate that with the team how however you might do that whether that's you know with capacity planning or performance testing whatever that might be or some you know you don't i, I don't you, don't, you want to make it scientific as possible you don't want to make make it based off of assumptions and all these things um, but yeah i would say you can kind of set an slo uh, and this is something I want to do for a new upcoming service, for example, set an SLO, get an agreement. And then if, if it, you know, if there's a couple of deployments and, and there's experimentation, uh, so be it, you can just set that SLO and error budget, like, like so, to some level where it's acceptable, you're kind of anticipating that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, so that's something you can do. I would imagine, I would imagine, <laughs> I would assume team teams do that thing internally at Google and elsewhere, but, uh, yeah, that's a awesome question yeah like everything else in software it has to be agile and constantly have to tweak yeah. uh, the slos and whatnot error budgets and so on mm-hmm. sounds great yeah th- thanks even for sharing your thoughts thank you everyone yeah thank you <laughs> thanks everyone <laughs> for listening in.